everyone, today on Gross Science, I'll be answering questions from you. Let's get started. <laughs> Question one from Rasha Shamoon on Facebook is, how do our brains decide what is gross? Is it purely evolutionary? And similarly, Job Coppenhall on Twitter asked, why are we repelled by gross looking things? And is the ew response only done by humans? So as far as we know, humans are the only animals that truly feel disgust. There are lots of other animals that avoid things that typically gross out humans, like feces or illness. But that being said, there are also a lot of animals that eat poop as a normal part of their diet. So clearly that's not universally true. Now, disgust probably stems from what we call distaste. That's when you recoil from sour or bitter foods because those flavors could be a sign of toxins. But while that reaction may have evolved to keep us healthy, when it comes to disgust, it's sort of morphed and taken on a life of its own. Now, while it might feel pretty involuntary, disgust is actually a learned behavior. For example, in the US, it's widely considered gross to eat bugs, whereas in other cultures, it's a totally common practice. Our feelings of disgust also go beyond the physical world. For example, we often label morally abhorrent people like Hitler disgusting. Dr. Paul Rosen, who's been studying disgust for years, says that we use it to protect ourselves from all sorts of contaminants, whether those contaminants are physical, moral, or spiritual. He also hypothesizes that the things we find most disgusting like feces or illness or cruel behavior are things that remind us that we're really just animals. And by extension, they're things that remind us of our own mortality because all living things eventually die. On that super happy note, let's move on to the next question. A girl named Sasha wrote me a letter and asked, do you know if boogers are a necessary part of your body? And Seven Skitty on Twitter wrote, what is the composition of a typical booger? Well, boogers are really just dried up nasal mucus or snot. And snot is really important. It does things like keep our nasal passages moist, traps dust particles and germs, and it even contributes to our sense of smell. It's made up mostly of water, but it also contains a small amount of these lubricating proteins called mucins. And mucins are actually found in a lot of slimy materials. For example, it's found in hagfish slime. And if you'd like to know more about that, I have a whole video on hagfish that you can watch. Snot also contains a few other things like salt and antibodies and lysozymes which both protect you from germs. Similarly, Russell Henderson on Facebook asked whether earwax contains natural antibiotics. And the answer is that like snot, earwax actually does help you fight off invading uh, fungi and bacteria, especially ones trying to infect the outer ear. Lots and lots of viewers, including Simply Maya Beauty and Amaral Zamri, asked me to make a video on trypophobia. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to explain what trypophobia is and where it might come from. Trypophobia is a fear of holes, usually ones that are close together and irregularly spaced. For example, a lot of people get creeped out by looking at the head of a lotus seed pod. Now, there's not a ton of research on this, and it's not even universally accepted as a real phobia, but scientists publishing in Psychological Science in 2013 found that um, the patterns that often trigger people's trypophobia are actually quite similar to the patterns on super poisonous animals. So we might have some ancient bias to things with certain patterns because avoiding those things kept us safe. Also, I would like to hypothesize that things like the lotus seed pod actually look a lot like skin that's been infested with parasites. Now, um, I started getting this question a lot after I made my video on bot flies. So I don't know, maybe that's another unconscious bias we have. Who knows? All right, guys, that's the end of this Q&A. Thank you so much to everyone who sent in questions. They were all really, really excellent. And in fact, there are some questions that I'm going to devote a whole episode to at some point in the future. Um, until then, though, thank you so much for watching and commenting. I can't tell you how much it means to me to hear from you guys, so please keep it up. All right, see you soon. Thank you.